is a Cosmic Octave original podcast. Me and Jake running down the street with a handful of comic books kicking ass and yeah. banging chicks and drinking beer. No, not and me. I'm, not weed. me. I'm or, married. Yeah, well, I'm married. Jake. Yeah, do that. Yeah. <laughs> off panel, off topic with Jake and Tyler. Welcome. With Joke and Taylor. When the fuck did that change? Welcome back to another episode. Riveting episode. I of am that. on the edge of my seat. You pay for the whole thing, but you only, only need, need the, the edge. edge. Uh, yeah. I went to the NCAAs on Thursday. I don't care. They came to Des Moines. I, I, don't, I don't care. I know you don't fucking care. They don't care. care either. Piece of All shit. Right? I'm the voice of fuck the people. You. <laughs> fuck you. I was sitting next to the most annoying... I'm joking. Continue your story. I was sitting next to the most annoying Illinois fan, um, and uh, she okay. So like when when normally when people would cheer for Illinois, um, she wouldn't. She'd be doing something like looking at her phone or something. Um, but then um, like like Arkansas would like have a turnover and for you know knock their own ball out of the yeah. you know out of bounds or something. And she'd be like, yeah, yeah, I don't know, yeah. And it was just like, that's not when you cheer. Like, that's a, you know, that's a fuck up. I mean, it benefits your team, but your that team lot. didn't do shit. Yeah. Um, but she had this shrill whistle, right? And I learned to understand when she was about to do it, and then I put my finger in my left ear because it was really loud. And I am an idiot with my hearing, and I have destroyed my hearing over the years. So I was just trying to protect it, and it didn't. It wasn't anything against her. I I could have taken or le- taken or left how she responded to the game, but I didn't really care that much. It was just odd the way you know. It was just like, it's you know, just inside I'd be like, why are you cheering right now? You should have cheered when they got a three over like you know a double team. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, so uh, at one point it was it was close to when we left, probably about ten minutes before we left, and probably like a little bit bit into the second half, she you know cheered and then i knew she was gonna whistle so i put my finger in my ear and she she said oh i'm so sorry and i'm like what and she's like oh i i'm being really loud aren't i and i was like ma'am don't worry about me honestly like it's my hearing like i'm just i've I've destroyed my hearing it's my fault like not yours at all but you know i can you know i'll you know whatever do not worry about me you're here to see your team in the ncaa tournament Rock your shit out. You know, do not worry about me. Like, just well, go nuts. Within reason. Well, no, I'm saying, Don't get like... Naked. Yeah, she was older. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Body shit. Why, why don't I go ahead and just uh, we have got some l- ageification? Let, let's, let's just what get... What is it, ageism? Let, let's get to the topics, okay? We got three things we need to talk about this week. Uh, we're going to talk about... We just, just a little bit ago, got out of Shazam, Fury of the Gods. Yeah. Talk about that. We're talking about Mandalorian, and then we're doing our Mayhem comic of the week. So that's I can't the sing it this week because my voice is shot, but good thing we recorded it. Yeah. So I don't have to sing it live like I do every week. Mm. You know, that's hard on my voice. That's why I recorded a version of it. So let's talk about Shazam, Fury of the Gods. <laughs> Uh, a movie Does it really need to have a spoiler free thing Like there's no we, real I, I mean, mean Outside of people like us I don't think a lot of people are going to see this I movie I say just say start Just start with pizza time man I don't even have it up You I son mean. of a bitch it's not even worth you it You fucking asshole I just Yeah Spoiler alert everybody Pizza time Spoiler We're going to talk about this whole movie Yeah uh, I will say Right out of the gate Spoiler free I'm going to give this movie a high mark. Oh, yeah, we can give high, uh, spoiler-free reviews, yeah. Yes, I want to do that quickly. And Sounds then, good. And then we'll go into that. But uh, without talking about anything in particular, I think um, it's the same things that I love. This is what's so frustrating. So this doesn't wow. have a be- uh, the best uh, <laughs> Rotten Tomatoes score right now. And I've learned... Is it audience or critic? Critic score. It's like a 56 or something, mm. uh, which is technically rotten. What movie did they see? <laughs> well, I the, the, the movie isn't perfect. None of these movies are perfect. No. But I think for what I came into, what I expected, it took everything I loved from the first movie and added to it, made it better, gave more character Almost moments. Amplified surprised it. me with how much character development they actually gave. Now clearly they like they have a lot of characters to juggle, so they're going to focus on a few few characters more than others. That's just how it is with uh, an ensemble like this sometimes. Mm. But I think the moments that we got were great, and I, I really, really enjoyed And I love that first movie. 
I think this is, for me, just as good, if not better, than the first one. I loved both these movies. This one, very much so. Mm. Um, I, uh, as, as, as everybody who listens to our show knows, I am a Marvel shill. Um, I'd like to, uh, be like, you know, no, but I, I mean, no, I'm not, I mean, I gotta be honest. I totally, you literally am. came in here before we recorded when we were like talking about this Avengers comic. You're like, look at it. Just look at it. Before we, it was cool before, art. I'm not saying Before it we leave, I'm going to talk about that. Okay. Yes. No, we got to ra- We got, we got to stick to a schedule. <sighs> Okay, so um, <laughs> no, but we were sitting. Uh, in, we were sitting in flicks, and uh, I turned to you and I said, "You know what? I, I and I, I had made this uh, um, kind of like a, you know, you, you know, when you tell yourself something, you're like, I'm gonna da 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 whatever." And I was like, "I'm going to give this movie a lot more open mindedness and a way more open chance than I did say Black Adam." So wh- let me ask you that before yeah. we get into the spoilers. Of this. Sure. Why? Why does he think that Shazam gets a pass, uh, a little bit more leeway than, say, Black Adam? Because Black Adam took itself too seriously. Because I was being, um, uh, I was, n- I was not being a, a good theater goer by being like, I'm, I'm not gonna fucking like this fucking movie. Like, fucking don't go then, dude. Just fucking don't go. Don't see it if you don't. Yeah, think you're don't like go. It. <laughs> you know, I mean, I could say, well, I was hanging out with my friend, you know, but, um, but that's. Honestly, even if you think it's going to suck, I mean, I don't know, man. Just just don't I, – I, I just – I try to – I'm trying to be more open-minded about a lot more things. But, yeah. And one of the things is that it's a DC movie. So I've talked about on the show how I don't give a shit about Shazam and shit. I've said that many times. And I said, you know what? That's a really shitty attitude to have. Why don't you go in there because you liked the first movie. I did. So why don't you go in there and, and just enjoy but, a movie uh, that – but again, let the movie entertain you. But you know? why did you? But okay. But going in, not seeing either. Why did you have? You didn't hate Black Adam. We talked. We talked. We had a no. Conversation but I've about, talked about how I don't give a shit. But, about it, you know, whatever, <laughs> right. Right. But right. what I'm saying is, why did you go in with a more open mind for this than you did for Black Adam? Why did you? Because maybe they, let yourself. Black Adam came first. I enjoy. Mean, no, I'm serious. If Shazam would have came out first, I would have gone in there with the attitude of fuck this movie. And then Black Adam, I would have been like, I, I better give this more of a, an open chance. I would have still liked Shazam better. I, I disagree. I think it's because you didn't want to like... Really? I think that you had a... Uh, you d- I Look, I get it. I think a lot of people turned on Black Adam because of The Rock and how he handled it. Sure. And I think that does play a factor. But if I'm, if we're being totally honest, okay. from, and from Jump Street... Fair. From from Front Street, from Jump Street, Street, whatever street you want to go from, I think we will both agree this is a much, much better movie than Black Adam. Absolutely. Miles but, ahead but of Black here, Adam. And, and let me make this clear, too. When I did go into Black Adam with a shitty attitude, I still kind of liked it. And that also led me to, to kind of say to myself, going into this one, hey, man, yeah. not because... Now, listen, it has nothing to do... Those are the... The last two DC movies to have come out, really. That's the only reason they're they're being compared to each other. I know there's connections, but that has nothing to do with it. The fact is, this was the next DC movie. And I said to myself, hey, I had a really shitty attitude about Black Adam, and I still was entertained by that. Like, when he first shows up, and they start shooting at him and shit, and he just fucking wastes all of them. No, That's there's, awesome. There's good moments in right. that movie. Yeah. So, But anyway. And that, I, anyway, that's... I, that's why I, I wanted to look, say to myself this time: give yourself a way more open mind, and you'll yeah. enjoy it more. And I, wanted, and I did. I wanted to get that discussion kind of out of the way at, at the Fair beginning enough. because obviously they're going to be talked about and compared because lo- whether the, the Rock likes it or not, Black Adam is Shazam's main villain. I can't say villain. I'm completely objective. I'm sure it has something to do with the fact that I didn't like Black Adam as much. Um, I think you. I, thought, I think yeah. you had low expectations for this movie, or mid to lower expectations. Black Adam, you had very low expectations, and you were like, eh. Well, I have that MCU fucking problem, plus, which is I'm always looking for the Easter eggs. Plus, I'm always looking for the fucking mid-credits look, and shit. Like, fucking knock that off. At, Enjoy the movie. Sometimes when I go back and I watch a movie after I see it in the theater, I might have different feelings about it. Sure. I can tell you this. Love and Thunder. Black Adam. I loved it in the theater. Did not like it on rewatch. <laughs> Black Adam, I did not change. I watched it, uh, rewatched it a couple weeks ago um, when my, in, my, my in-laws were in town. Yeah. And they had not seen it before, and I had seen it, and I remember sitting there, and I'm like, there's things that I saw in that movie that I'm like, 
that works for me. That's good. Let's, but then right. there's other things where it's like, this plot line doesn't connect. This doesn't make sense. The villain is shoehorned in at the last minute. Like, there's so many things wrong with that movie. Dude, and every time Adam Smasher's on screen, he's being a bumbling fucking idiot. But and, it's like, what? And, and that's the comparison I want to make, too, with this, with the first Shazam and this Shazam, both. They really expanded on what I thought this was going to be and excelled at that. Now, this, game, this, this, this movie isn't, like, you know, the perfect... DC movie, but I think it's no. one of the most rewatchable. I think it's one of the most enjoyable. I had a fucking blast watching this movie, and that's what these movies should be. Can I ask you? This is an interesting question. It's kind of on the spot, but let's stick to DC EU movies. Which one do you think so far has been the best one? Do we include Zack Snyder's Justice League? Uh, I. I don't think you should because it was kind of a fan. For me, thing. Th- I I would honestly even say with this one, I think both Shazam movies in my mind were the best DCEU movies. Okay, yeah. And my, for my money, because I am a defender of Batman v Superman. I am a defender of me too. I defend. Look, I I don't. It the only problem for me with Batman v Superman. Uh, well, there's many problems with that movie, <laughs> and we're not going to get into that. No. But one of them is I shouldn't have to watch a director's cut to get the full experience. Right. And that's what you have to do. If you watch the ultimate cut of BVS, it's much better. But back to Shazam. Yes. Let's get into it. Spoilers. We're talking you about don't everything. What were you going to What were we going to say? Zack Snyder's Justice League. <laughs> <laughs> Shazam! And then Lightning Bolt. I, I told now, you. We're I talking told about you the movie now. Use it. Talking about the movie now. Spoilers. I used it. Talk about everything. Yeah. For starters, mm. I can t- I I really really love this Shazam family because they did a, such a really good job. I when I saw that first movie with some friends and, and and we got out of it and I said this is how I know that movie really really worked for me is when the end when they all get the Shazam when he shares his powers with his family and they mm. all become the Shazam family. I was fucking going nuts like i was excited for that i was like that's so cool yeah because they did such a good job in that first movie building this family mm. and then come this movie it, it just continues like i think there's a lot of chemistry between the kids i think they did a really good job for the most part translating that to the wizard versions because the more adult versions billy batson is the only one that like stands out to me where i'm like what they did it in the first movie but why is why is the adult version of Billy a fucking idiot? And then when he goes back to his regular version, he's this sensitive, guarded, drifter kid that finally has a family, and he's well, clean. I th- I think and that's, all that nuance get, gets worn off when he I, becomes I, a wizard. I, 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 you mean Shazam? Whatever. Well, yeah, Shazam. But listen, listen, they're wizards. Listen, listen you you were saying this on the way out of the theater, and and I I thought at the time I was like, you're you, you know you're right. But then now that you're saying it now, I got to be honest, man. um, He's not Billy a lot in the movie. He's not. No, it's mostly it's actually so. So I think if you want to look for an in-universe reason or whatever, I think um, when he is Billy, he's like, this is serious time, you know. But when he's Shazam, he's trying to be overconfident. Yeah. Yeah, What I was saying. out of And by the way, Zachary Levi is the best choice for this character. Hands down. Oh, I, I love, I love. He's fucking great. I, look, there are going to be people out there that are like staunch defenders of Captain Marvel and Shazam, and like he's not this goofy character. And I'm like, bitch, well, bitch. Mm. They made a reference to that silly ass live action show in this movie. Yeah, the dude that was the original Shazam is in this movie, yes. and it's a funny little cameo. And it's like. The cartoon, the Shazam cartoon, like this was always been. I grew up with those things. They were this, horrible. This was the, uh, you know, this golden, the golden age, you know, mass crazy adventures, magical characters. Yeah. So he's always been kind of silly in some sense. Now I can understand how he got. Again, mm-hmm. he got really goofy. Now what I was saying to do, you, do you know what the, uh, his hold, original? Hold on, go ahead, the, go ahead. When we were coming out of the theater, what you were referring to, yeah. What I was saying is they haven't explicitly said this, but this is me picking up. Like maybe me reading into it as a viewer and why I love art so much. My take on it, my brain canon was when he becomes uh, Shazam. It is like I said, it's 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 playtime because most of his life he hasn't had a childhood 
and he's been so guarded, and he's been in and out of the foster care system, and he's been, he, also he never he's, had a, he's not Billy. He never had anybody love him. Nobody's gonna recognize him as Billy. And so then, right? when he becomes Shazam, that's he, they do it in the first movie. He's a little bit. He's cockier. He's funnier. He's he's out of his shell. Objectively, because Zachary Levi's a good-looking dude. He's tall and whatnot. Yeah. So that's probably another thing. Confidence. And I understand that, but I just feel like in this movie, they cranked up his stupidity a little bit, and like made him a little bit goofier it's than fair. he was in that it's first. Like he's he's very goofy in that first movie. Yeah, but. But when Freddie cha- when Freddie changes to Adam Brody, I feel a continuity there. I'm like that. He yeah. looks like him. He's acting like fair. Because that the younger actor, I I got to look up his name. But the younger actor, Jack uh, Dylan Glazer, I yeah, think. Yes, Glazer. Yes. I don't know. He was in the It movies. He's great in this. The reason why He's I know the first is because they they were very specific with the credits, which I like. That they're like, hey, this is who that character. Yeah, was he, was, uh, he was a he was he was great in the first movie. He was great in those it movies. I really like him. I told you, I think that dude, Jack. Yeah, you're right. It's Jack Dylan Grazer. He is gonna be a uh, he's gonna be a star. Like so he he steals this movie. Like he is an, fucking amazing in yeah, this movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, here's an interesting uh, uh, note: is that uh, the only okay? So in the original movie, but that's, all of the kids were played by adults as Shazams, right? And you see what I mean with him and, and, and Adam Brody working, like th- that I attitude get gets across right. when he changes. This, But this is just a side note Yes, uh, about production. Um, every one of the kids, including the, the girl who plays in this movie, both Mary and the, the yeah, regular... Yeah, because she got to a certain age where they're like, let's just make her the same. Right. <laughs> so you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. This, she's the only one that plays both parts. Every other character is played by two actors, yeah. and I think Megan Good does a really good job. She's great of playing yeah. little, oh, like yeah. playing up that she's like kid. an eight year old. Yeah, yeah, I like that. That was funny. Yeah, the, and j- again, just like the first movie, there is a ton. Just say say what, their name. What, Destiny's Child did it better. What makes this movie work <laughs> is it's it. And what made that first movie work is it's it's so over the top and magical and epic and comic booky, but at the same time it's very grounded in the reality of it and this is why I always think kids work very, very well as superheroes. Mm. Like that whole thing like Stanley got it right with Spider Man where he's like, it works if he's a teenager because we can all relate to that. And we've like, all been, yeah. Yeah, and you're seeing mo and like for me Either you are or, or you've been. Another reason, like, I really enjoyed this movie is one of those situations where I was getting nostalgic for that age and being like, what that was like being 18 and not having your life figured out and having. And so to see that. I was too hammered to remember that <laughs> shit. And, but to see that played out. Where's my next beer? To see that played <laughs> out for Billy as a power fantasy, you know, and, and the, I don't know. I just really love this movie. I, I can't say. I was going in with pretty good expectations and it, it did a lot of better than I expected. Was I, it. Was it predictable at times? Mm. Absolutely. But oh, I yeah. still enjoyed the fuck out of this movie. And, and there were, to be honest, there's there's a plot hole or two, whatever. Um, I don't, it doesn't ruin the movie by any yeah. means. I'm sorry, I've been so rambly. Go ahead. No, you're fine. Um, you know, to, to be a, uh, one of those douchebags, like, you know, when they were rushing people off of the bridge, right? Um, in oh, my God. M- no, I know, right? I'm one of those douchebags. In my mind, I'm like, well, I hope they're cradling their neck or else they're just snapping like, twi-, you know? Because I'm thinking about real life physics, yeah. I forget that I'm watching a fucking movie. Or you know, what and got, so immediately uh, I was like, "Shut up, nerd!" You know, one thing shut that up, made me a little douche. annoyed was when they were rescuing their parents and when they're still the Shazam family. And at one point, they're running, like the Shazam people. I'm like, "Pick them up and fly!" Oh yeah, well, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you, know, uh, you got to add tension. The somewhere. also, also, um, there were a couple moments where it was really, really easy for them to just, "Hey, you're not a Shazam anymore." Ha! <laughs> I'm like, well, "Shit! Yeah. How do you fight them?" You know, um, I, I. I thought the solution to beating them was really, 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 really needlessly complicated. I think it added about 20 minutes to a movie that is enjoyable. What, are you talking about the dome stuff? Just all of it. Just, you know, just the whole, like, last, uh, the whole last part where he's, you know, going to her and she's like, you know what to do. And he's like, you know what to do. And like, what is he going to do? I don't know. And then it's it's just really like okay listen here's what we're gonna do okay, um, but again starting with the movie, in that first part where I'm being that douchebag nerd like well, uh, actually you know if real real life physics did it right 
Yeah. And by that point in the movie, it's almost the end of the movie. By that point, I have I have suspended all disbelief. I mean, there's a giant wooden and dragon right, and that here's, paralyzes people with fear. And, and, <laughs> st- and, and let me finish my point. <laughs> Don't make it for me. <laughs> You're right. But, um, no, it, it's so much better when you... Uh, when you go into a movie and you let yourself just be like taken away with the journey and shit, Kingdom of the Crystal Skull is a fucking objectively. Oh, oh my god! Stop. How let many me times do you have to mention that movie? Make my point. You've made your point about that fucking movie. But anyway, continue. You're talking about same thing with Indiana Jones. Chris. It's a shitty movie objectively. But when I went you, to the theater that summer, right? Exactly. You, this is the same thing. I wanted a movie going experience. I got it. I got the spectacle, and I got. I I I I got misty a couple times because the 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 character building and the emotional weight of these characters is is palpable. It's real, and you know when when you know of course it's tugging on your heartstrings and stuff. But when they're all standing outside of the dome and he's about ready to make the sacrifice, you know, that's what that like when he says I'm I'm Captain uh, Every Power Junior or whatever yeah. or you know whatever, and he laughs. Even though he's really sad, he like just laughs out of. See, now that is a moment where it felt like they finally got the continuity right with 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 between Zachary Levi and and the you know, the Billy. Right. That but, was the one of the times I'm like, you got it there. But those are <laughs> moments in those are moments when uh, the Freddie Freeman character when he when he laughs. Those are moments that are like real life. Yeah. You know, sometimes when you're crying your eyes off, out, something happens and you and you laugh. You 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 don't. Everybody grieves differently, whatever. Yeah. And I, I just really enjoyed, I enjoyed all the interactions, dude. There was that moment where they sent. Let's talk about Steve. Steve was probably the best part of the movie, almost um, the, the uh, magic writing pen. Um, but they send uh, Helen Mirren. <laughs> that was the funny. Yeah, that was probably. The well, you're already you're already dying because of the uh, the whole Destiny's Child joke. Because well, that's going on well, when all, she gets the... F- a great example, and again, what I love about this movie is it does a great job, and I will say there are times... Letter, can, letter, writing a letter. Sometimes it kind of loses its tone a little bit, but I think there's... But when you... Look, if you go in... But genuine if laughs. It's, it's, I had genuine laughs. It's just like the first movie. You got to know what you're getting into. It's a comedy with action. Mm, so yes. there's the, there's so much opportunity for this to be jokey, and that's what it does. But like this, there's times when they fucking nail it, and it's when they make up this whole mythology of like, well, if you write a letter to a god, it magically sends it out to them, and they they can read it. So she's torturing this kid because one of the sisters is that she has the power to control or power of chaos, and by doing that, she can she like whispers something. If you're and weak they minded, do you'll do yeah. it. And like one part again, like the first movie, gets kind of dark where the teacher comes out and they make him walk oh, off yeah. the what building. The fuck, like, Shit. Right? But anyway, she's like trying, and it's like seriously intense. His eyes are black. There's like whispering, and it's like this really fucking crazy scene. And again, the uh, the kid's killing it, and. She keeps saying, say their name, say their name, you know, like, whatever, trying to get who the other Suzanne members are. And then, yeah, he's, Destiny's Child did it better. Yeah, and it's he like, just grunts it out. And it's, there's, like, you're talking about, in the dome, and there's just, like, there's just moments. Mm. I love it when a movie can work its tone, balance its tone, where, like, it's something really serious and a lot of, you know, emotional weight, and then immediately have a levity when, of that when joke. When she's reading that letter. And then it goes to the letter I sequence, stop, which, holy I, fuck. You know when you laugh and it's hard to breathe because you're laughing so hard. That was a moment. That for made me. The, that one was the one that I think got the most laughs of in the theater too. It was because she gets that letter. Do we have gay trade? I want to. Read. She's reading it, and the thing is, he'll say whatever. It's it's like he's writing whatever you're saying. Yeah, it's like you're in court. They type everything you're saying. You know, so. They're going, but they're all like brainstorming this I can't, letter. We can't do it justice. It's no, so you good. have to see it. In you the have movie. to watch it. Yeah, and yeah, and it, it's literally of like, <laughs> wait, should we, should we look over this draft but and make a second draft? She's reading and then it another like, so deadpan though. And then another character, nah. Steve knows what he's doing. You just say what you're thinking. He'll write it out perfectly fine. And then, by the way, do we have Gatorade? I, I want, want a red, red one. I want a red one. <laughs> what is a Gatorade? <laughs> But yeah, again, I I think this movie but does mere, a good job. Some uh, people might say it's sloppy. I like it. I think it works well when they balance the more serious shit with with a lot with a joke. Dude, you know what was one of the best comedic moments was when Freddie when Freddie gets locked in the cell with the wizard, 
and the wizard is just being an asshole yes. to him. That shit was hilarious. You didn't mention how sarcastic you were. Right. Like, <laughs> I don't even sound God. I don't even sound like that. <laughs> is that a tooth? I found a tooth. I found a, yeah, I found a tooth. <laughs> I think they did. Let, I honestly think they let the camera roll a little bit and kind of. Oh let yeah, because there's some shit you got to know is improvised. But um. But yeah, Jamon Hounzu Hounzu play. Uh, he he kills it. He's great in that. Well, yeah. the part, he's got a bigger part in this one really than the first one too. When he when he touches her on the chest and goes boop hero yeah. and he fucking rolls his eyes in the back. Like he did what I did. I was like, good job. Good okay. Job, movie. I don't know if you noticed this, but in for the a while. Yes. <laughs> were you doing the same thing? Okay, so so it starts with like a wide shot during Super what we're dramatic talking about. Scene. Right. And 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 this is where Billy's gonna be the hero. Too. Jake and I are the same guy. The we just we in noticed Jamon who Hounzu as the wizard in the background, and he's just being like, What the fuck? Come on, let's go. And like somebody shit. forgot to tell him to get out of frame. Right. Like and he's just kind of hanging out in the back. Like And then they they show the joke, but Jake and I are already in on it because he's been doing it for fucking five minutes already. It's like, okay, well, we already know the joke. I really think that might have been an error. I really <laughs> think that might have just forgot to tell him to get out of frame or he didn't know where his mark was or he's in the wrong mark. Or, I don't know. But it is funny because he's just kind of scratching his arm, just <laughs> hanging out yeah, in the background. Like, Fine, what the fuck? Oh, okay, you did a good yeah, job. Yeah, I'll give you my oh, speech. Yeah. And then he, she fucking has a speech. But that scene's great, though. By the way, emotionally, very hits great when she says, "I want to talk to Billy. I want to talk mm. to my son." So then he turns oh, back, gosh. and they have that moment where, he, and the kid nailed it, like the, the, the crying, and single tear. The single is great. I, again, the, the special effects works, were great. This movie works so well because mm. it was casted so well, and they really nailed the family. And you're right. Maybe because this movie's been sh- put on the shelf like three fucking times, they had time to actually make the visual I, effects maybe, work in this but movie. I, I, there wasn't ever a moment where I was like, ooh, bad CGI, you know? There really wasn't. Yeah. Um, I thought it was maybe they did a lot more practical shit, um, and maybe that's why it looked so good. I know, like, a lot Again, of Again, I think it's because they had so much time that I know it's been a lot delayed. of the damage. Like, when, they, when he pushes her, when he uh, slams her down through the street into that lower garage, yeah. you know that was really... Yeah, like they broke stunts, this yeah. right, so I mean I think that was part of it is that they I think they did a lot more practical stuff than some uh, superhero movies do. I really dug, but I, great special effects. I really love the fight uh, that he that um, he had with Helen Mirren in that when he like t- knocks her down and then they're fighting. Oh yeah, yeah, the end. Not th- well, not when they capture her. So when they're they're fighting and then she's got them tied up and she's like choking again. This movie sometimes really leans into its violence a little bit, which yeah. is a little bit more surprising in a movie like this. But um, yeah, so he, she's like choking him out and he goes, "Did your dad have super speed?" And he like spins around her and it smashes her into the wall. And I was like, again, me as a viewer, I'm like, "Fuck yeah!" Like they, again, they're doing a good job. I'm like, "Thank you, Billy. You're learning. You're figuring this shit out." Like. You well, want, you okay. want to root for Billy. You so, know what I mean? Yeah, so what uh, yeah, he, she's choking him out and she's standing in one place. He's basically on the ground like just done for. And she's making this fucking giant rock m- with all this shit like and and basically going to elemental. Going to move it directly to the left, not you know, follow him. <laughs> And he recognizes that, and he's like, "Wait a second! If I just fucking switch places with her when she's not I spin around and shove her, yeah, she'll get hit by the thing because she doesn't have super speed." Yeah, there so. you go. No, uh, I guess he didn't. Booyah! No, but he 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 kills it. He kills it. Uh, everybody in this movie pretty much kills it. I really enjoy. Uh, really, really enjoyed it. I think I really, really enjoyed it. Oh, dude, I I do have some issues with this. I'm sure you do. One of them. Is the ending. Now, I thought the whole point, for me, and this is just because I this is where I thought this was going narratively, I thought the whole thing was going to be like, I didn't think they were going to kill him. Because at the end of the movie, yeah. he, he destroys the dragon, kills the dragon, kills one yeah. of the, kills that lady and everything, like sacrifices himself and he's dead, right? Mm, mm, mm. And in my mind, I'm like, well, clearly he's not dead. Like, yeah, <laughs> they're yeah. going to bring him back, yeah. you know? Um. How they did it was great because it was a really funny joke uh, 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 and similar what they did at the first movie and then just amped it up another level to actually having Gal Gadot do it. Mm. But like just the fact that he just like you were mentioning that they can willy nilly just throw out throw the wizard powers into these people. Mm. And it just kind of like I thought the whole point was going to be that 
they all lose. This is what I would have done, Ryder Jake here. Don't take don't take what I say with a grain of salt. But what I would have done, what I thought would have made more sense on his character arc, he can't. Sure, he does get brought back to life, but he cannot give back the power of Shazam. Or maybe there was just enough. Wonder Woman. Yeah. Wonder Woman gave it enough spark to bring him back, or whatever. Right. Because to me, the whole point of it was he's got to let these people go. But then they kind of just didn't. I feel like if, to finish that idea for me, he's the only one that can be. Well, Shazam. you just hate families. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> that being said, you just hate people being together. That being said, that is how I would have done it. But I do. I like, would have done. The same but thing. I like this family, and I think this family tests true, well, true. and they want these characters but, back. in the But next here's world. exactly why, and this is why, and and now. But you see what I'm saying with that that, that idea of like just so, him being Shazam. I don't think it was the aged out as much as okay. So I remember when Shazam came out, and I actually watched all the special features, and they were talking about how. Um, The original okay, so the 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 actress who played Mary Marvel is now playing. Is her name Mary? Character Mary? Yeah, the character's name is Mary. Okay, is now playing Mary also. Yes, right. And uh, if I remember correctly, um, because Freddie Freeman is at that age, whatever, right? And well, you also got to so keep is in mind, Billy Batson you'll, kind of. You also have to keep in mind this is filmed like probably two years ago. Right, but what I was gonna say is that you know you're gonna have that problem with as they age, you know, but but. Yeah. Hang on, but what I was thinking is when Freddie Freeman gets turned into Adam Brody, even though Freddie Freeman might be like an adult or a young man, I think it still works because it's an amplified version of him. Yeah. So I don't uh I, I, I agree with your writing uh uh idea, but I would have used it to get out of that hassle and I realize there's no hassle. <laughs> I'm really glad that no, I told I'm, you I'm, all I'm, about I'm, that. I'm, fucking I'm, I'm totally fine with them having the family because I like the family, so I want to see more of that. Well, also, good, good for you. Also, uh, I love the fact that they had uh, Pedro be gay, and the way that he came out is when they all were like getting ready to say we're the sh- we're sh- we're the Shazam, you know, or we're we're superheroes. Yeah. Is what they're going to say, and he's like, "I'm gay," and we're like, yeah. But, "Yeah, we know, yeah, buddy." Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and you know, I've never personally had that happen, but there's been times where I find out someone I know is gay. And I'm like, yeah, I know. Like, you know, I just love how they're just so accepting of it. Like, we know, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. Uh, again, because it adds to that family just a being a loving, caring home for these kids that they don't get. And that's why it's so easy to root for is them. Is the reason why, uh, is this movie uh, not a uh, great tomato, uh, t- tomato score or whatever? Is that why we haven't seen a lot of grifts about. Uh Oh, because there's no money in it, probably. Because I haven't. I mean, you well, haven't. Well, you know, you know, it. the narrative is going to be like the shitty box office. But if I'm being totally honest, there's no one to blame that on this movie of being a failure than DC themselves. No, because, no, I, because I'm glad they're not saying shit. Because no, I am I'm too. Tired I, of I am them. too. But here's my thing: this movie, I love this. <laughs> but movie. But I find it interesting that it's a bad. It's a poorly. Uh, I love this movie, but I know it's going to. I, I I have a strong feeling it's going to be a flop. Probably. And. It's again. It's the D- amount of money it costs. It's nobody's fault but DC's yeah. because this is their reputation. Hey, by the way, Lego, where's my DC Shazam set? You fucks. And my and my and on, be, honestly, I had not really seen that much promotion of it throughout. And usually, usually, like I, I feel like when I, I saw more ads for Black Adam than I did for Shazam. To be honest. Oh yeah, the yeah the marketing push for Black Adam was far greater. Which I think is it, again sucks because I think this. Uh, both Shazam movies are the stronger DCEU movies, and especially this movie. Now, I I just don't know what they're going to do because I feel like logically the next step would have been Black Adam. And, and you know, because I said back in the finger on my back, face, back when they were showing this shit <laughs> off at Comic Con, he was last picking summer, my nose last almost. summer. I said, guys, this is the setup you put out Black Adam. In October, you have Shazam coming out in December. You have a scene with Black Adam at the end, and then have him show like that was almost too perfect. And then they fucked that up because Dwayne Johnson wants to fight fucking Superman. No, he wants to fight Henry Cavill <laughs> instead of uh, you know actually fighting the hero. He, if you want to do Black Adam movie, fine, but you have to pay that off with Shazam. Yeah. Otherwise, what are you doing? What are you doing? 
They even used the same you guy. Know, you know, the same wizard. You know, growing up, um, I really liked Chewbacca. Okay, I really liked him a lot. But what I thought was a big problem was that Han Solo was always yeah, around. Fucking Han Solo. You know, so what I wanted to do was I wanted to make a Chewbacca movie without Han Solo. That's interesting, The Rock. Um, what are you going to do for your next uh, uh, movie? You know what I really liked about Starsky and Hutch? is Starsky. It, but I really didn't like Hutch. No. So next movie, Starsky. Even better. Starsky, Even no better. Uh, it's a Starsky and Hutch movie with me and Kevin Hart. And that's <laughs> time, not, time out. Now I kind of want that movie. Shit. Now I got to work. <laughs> You're not even going to give me any props on my on my Dwayne the Rock impression. It wasn't great. If you're going to do the Rock, you got to do like his promos from pro wrestling days. You know, no. The Rock says because that's the Rock. That's not Dwayne Johnson. Wait, they're, they're different. I thought they were. Oh, anyway. uh, final thoughts. Final grades. Really liked it. I gave it five wizards. No, uh, I give it five. <laughs> five. If I were to give it a grave, a uh, grave. Wow. If I were to give it a grade, I think you guys know how much I love it. A plus. I fucking love this movie. It, I'll give it a solid A. It exceeded every expectation I had. It did everything I wanted. Actually, A minus because it was DC. And I will say this to wrap to put a bow on it. I think I think there's a lot of criticism of it because we are again still living in because there's a gay character. No, <laughs> because we're we're living in a post end game world huh. where every like. Every superhero movie's got to redefine the genre and and, sh- and 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 all these other things. Like you said, it's going to change my perception. It doesn't look like, it. but this movie is a great example. It's okay to play it safe and do have you remember, fun. Do you remember why I always said that I didn't give a fuck about this movie is because of that? Do you remember that? But then you watched it and the characters won you no, over. No, and I went into this movie going, I don't give a fuck if this changes my life or if this fucking reveals something about the DCEU. Because... Well, dude, I'm that's why, I'm glad that's why I haven't been able to really enjoy an MCU movie in a long time because I got stuck in that fucking rut of like, where's the Easter eggs? Where's the next? ba ba da ba You know, what's the end credit? Like, stop that. Right. Stop that shit. Go to the movie and enjoy the movie. Have some popcorn and some soda and a fucking pizza because we went to Flix. By the way, Flix has it all over every other theater with the wow. pre-movie stuff. Wow. I'm just going to keep doing it. I'm going to go into Flix this week and get us a promotion from them. <laughs> I don't have the time free, for that. No, I'm going to. No, we'll get free beer for you whenever you go. I don't know. All we got to do every week is go, brought to you by Flix. Oh. Brew house. Anyway, A plus for me, so, A for Tyler. A minus, because it's DC. A minus? Wow. Well, I got to add the DC. The, the DC. Uh, <laughs> oh, well, actually, did you know this thing about Celestials? No, nobody fucking cares about Celestials, Tyler. God damn it. We do that one more time. What? Do that one more time. Yeah, we well, ask me to think about the last meal. Fucking nerd. All right. Anyway, <laughs> moving on. <laughs> what was this thing? By the way, how what can is I? This how, thing? how can I? Are you just? Is this how you denote Tyler, that you have glasses on? Is just pointing to your fucking this nose? This is this is a like pop culture movie, TV, comic book show, and I'm calling you a fucking nerd. I okay. Know. No, Come well, on. I thought that, that's why it was so funny. Because I am. Well, let's talk about... Uh, your your impression of me was flawless. Dun, dun, See, dun, I, give, I give credit let's to talk good about, impressions. Shut up. Let's talk about The Mandalorian. <laughs> no. Because I didn't th- watch it. Season 3, episode 3. I didn't watch it. You watched it. I watched the you first watched. scene before I left the station This today. is the first episode of the season mm. that I was like... Mm, don't really care for this. Well, see, all I saw was up to um, when uh, they um, chase off the, the when they chase off the people who bombed her castle, and then I had to go. But I read the synopsis, so I know what happens. In <laughs> no, the- you didn't miss much because it's that, and then this like twenty thirty minute sidetrack. Yep. Talk about the the dude, yeah, the the guy from the first season that was running tests on Grogu, and like, okay, I understand the intent of it. I understand that, like, okay, we're gonna build up this villain. We're also going to show um, the beginnings of the first em- uh, the, is it the first empire in, in the sequel trilogy, New Republic or the First Order? First Order, that's what it was. You're starting to see the the for- reformation of the 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 first order, and you're the you know the gal the empire turning into the first order, and you're seeing this character fine, but you could have done that in a much shorter uh, for me a much shorter time span in that episode. Okay. 
Because they've done such a great job of making me care about Mandalore and Bo-Katan and uh, Din that when it's away from them, I'm like, I, I don't, I don't, I don't think it like. It's like, like I'm doing this with my hands, like hey, when I'm in my TV, because it 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 just kills. It doesn't it feel like it. It just grinds the momentum to a screeching halt, there, and to a point where I fell asleep watching it, and I had to wake myself back up to finish watching the episode. To I think I'll, I think I'll have a different perspective because the synopsis I read is very intriguing to me, and I really liked Andor. It's interesting, and they said they were like, "Oh, they're trying to be Andor," and I'm like, "All right." That's interesting, but again, I don't know. I haven't. I just think that, like, for me, I'm really excited about the Bo Katan. Uh, Again, character arc again that is what i'm more excited right. about and i'm more interested in so it was kind of like a oh well, wait what and i get again i admire that they maybe it'll pay off in the next episode <laughs> I, I admire that again they're building up a villain they're getting they're showing you these other things these other elements and i i can respect that mm. but at the same time i'm like i want to know more about like you said i want to know more about bo katan i want to know more about mandalore that you did well, think about you've done a good enough job to make me want to see that she comes out of the water with him and stuff she doesn't take her helmet off yet she never does in the episode as far as i know and after they get back to where she was staying or whatever the, she her whole castle gets bombed and it's almost like i i said this uh okay so she sees a mythosaur in the last episode right so it's like this like um I consider myself a Christian and everything, whatever. But if it's I was like, come to Jesus, if mom. I was walking, it is. If I was walking with somebody and they were like, "Hey, man, uh, I'm really, really into Jesus," like oh, whatever, and then they fell into a crevice, and I had to go in and rescue them, and I was like, "Oh man, I got to rescue them." And while I'm rescuing them, I look over and it's there's a, just, and there's Buddy Christ from you know oh, Dogma. I thought you were gonna say a Jesus mythosaur. <laughs> sure, yeah, that'd be wild. A Jesus a sore. Yeah, now that's something I want to see. A Jesus Rex. <laughs> a Jesus Rex. Why are you high fiving me? Because that's a new comic. Jesus Rex. Yo, oh, he's pissed. Resurrect. Resurrect. <laughs> Jesus resurrects. Jesus and the resurrections. <laughs> no. Fuck you. I'm tired of dead people compared to boners. <laughs> <laughs> Rigor mortis. Stiffy. I got a stiffy. So, that's a dead body. <laughs> yeah. See, it's interesting. What are they talking about? You got me off my fucking. No, that's interesting. It, it is kind of a like they do a good job of subtly showing that in the episode. It's subtly, sudden, uh, subtly showing a change in her. I agree yeah. with you. I think there there is that, and it is funny because she she has had her helmet off multiple times before. She's flown without her helmet, but she's weirdly keeps her helmet on the whole oh, entire no, like, time. And then you, got, you, you, yeah, no, you, it's okay. You sidetracked me. I, I, I loved it. But no, yeah, you see the, you see Jesus Rex. Yeah, <laughs> and Jesus then, Rex. And then you come out of the crevice, and you're like, um, I'm, I'm kind of changing my mind about some things. Um, I kind of can't uh, deny what I saw. You know. Yeah. So the ending of that episode is really cool to have the. Uh, so she the knows. Redeem, the she knows the mines are, you know, real. And there's the living waters are real. Yeah. She knows that the mythosaurs are real. So she's questioning because she was brought up in the elite of Mandalore, where they had already yeah, her family ruled. According to the people that Din grew up with, the uh, what is it? This the the people of the Watch or whatever. Yeah, the Night Watch. The problem or where you drink this no calorie soda, it makes you burpy, <laughs> right? Um, well, I'm guessing anyway. No, but okay, but think about it like this, like. If you think about it, almost like they were the true believers. Yeah. And the elite, the ruling family, was content letting them because they were like, fine, as long as they have their religion, they'll leave this the fuck alone, yeah. whatever. And they never believed any of it. They might have even fucking done some pageantry with it to keep and, them, you know and, what I mean? And that, and so that for is, the first time, she's like, oh my God, I truly am a Mandalorian now. That's what I think. That's and I what, never was before. That's why I have a lot of trust in Filoni and, and, and Favreau with what they're doing because, yeah, they're, they're, they're really digging. They're, they're, it's funny because now it seems like Disney, Star Wars is learning, like, let's keep digging up this lore because there's so much. It's fucking Star Wars. There's Dude, so much. Mandalore. Mandalore lore. Mandalore lore. lore. That's our new episode, Mandalore Lore, the podcast. Mandalore, the podcast. Mandalore Lore, giving it. So you know what I thought, what I was hoping they would do this I'm season? I'm glad you stopped me, because I was about to go yeah. off on a rockabilly I don't, tangent. Obviously, I don't think they're going to do this, but it, coming into the season, I thought they were going to be like, and maybe they still will, 
But I'm like, just give me one fucking flashback scene. Not even a long one. Just a brief flashback scene of the Mandalore Jedi I thought War. The, I thought the beginning of it was um, a flashback to when Din first got yeah. his helmet. But could you imagine that? Seeing that in oh, live dude, action? I the Mandalore Jedi War? Oof. That's You know, that's what you need to give us. Hey, assholes, this is what the fans want. We want Jedi and Mandalorians fighting alongside and then against each other. I just want to see fighting. No, but we won't see a lot of fighting. No. But I think the the episode Enough of this Western bullshit. I will say this though, this show did I think put a nice bow on it. So while I didn't like really love that middle portion of the episode, it really did a good. I thank God they cleared out that narrative because I'm like, are we really just never gonna go back to them at all the rest of this episode? That's what I was really worried. But we get back to them at the end, and it's that really really interesting scene where she's like. She, you know, Bo Katan, you are redeemed. She goes, What are you talking about? And she's like, Well, you swam in the living rivers and you haven't taken your helmet off since. No. Don't well, spoil it for me. <laughs> you're redeemed. This is the way. And I'm like, Fuck, man. Because now that adds an interesting layer. Because now this whole time there's this narrative hook throughout this season. I'm like, Is she going to fucking take her helmet off? No, hang on. Is a she going to believe this shit Here's now? Is she going to be him with him or is she going to backstab him? I don't know. You remember you were talking about how is this going to affect the battle with for the dark saber and I just it just came to me. Yes. Do you remember how he had to ask her all about the dark saber? Yeah. So as far as they are concerned, they don't give a fuck. So now he can give it to her with no problems. And she actually because knows how to shit, use right. And she knows knows how to use it. He's still struggling with the weight of it. He's still trying to learn how boom. to use. Fucking boom, dude. That's that's that that ru- that wraps up the dark saber uh, th- uh, storyline in a nice little fucking bow, dude. I don't have to fight you for it. Here you go, because under the way, this is the way. Yeah, because he didn't know anything about the dark saber or or all the stuff that she was talking about, where you have to you know best me in combat. Honestly, I don't think they're gonna do it. <laughs> no, he's not gonna just give it to her. No, they're gonna have some sort of sure. Fight. I think maybe maybe. I don't know. See, you're right. That adds a whole different layer. It's going to be different. So there's a new way to end that uh, that dark the armor saber will figure something out, and she'll come up yeah. with a with a something. You know what I mean? I'm sure they have some sort of protocol and I, procedure. But see, again, I, they've done a great job of getting me back interested oh, in all this the, the 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 mythos and the, and the lore behind the mythosaur. Well, just well, just the the, the fact that we're talking about when you have that age old tale of two different groups of people and they're in that, that that struggle for power that struggle for freedom and, and all this stuff that's always going to be an interesting compelling storyline and to mm. see them like go into that lore of it because the mandalore shit is so fucking well, Bo- i didn't even know about it until you told me about it. i'm like oh fuck dude that's well, awesome Bo- bo-katan <laughs> cries uh, you know i mean her she decries in the first episode of the season when he goes to visit her she's I'm like done. Well, she's like, well, so many people, like, we, we allowed ourselves to be, you know, uh, um, split up and everything with different beliefs and stuff. Honestly, your your ruling family probably encouraged that, if not outright fucking, like, made it happen. Yeah. Because that's how people rule other people. And the thing that I think is really interesting is she is like, God damn it, if, if only we hadn't been so split up, we could have fought against the Empire. Well, you're the fucking family that probably made it happen, yeah. dude. And now she's finally becoming a true Mandalorian, which is really, really cool. And I think Filoni is sitting there going, you know, with all them uh, Clone Wars stories with Bo-Katan and stuff, I kind of fucked up the Mandalorian like kind of mythos. And I want to get back to like the legends of what that was. Because most of yeah, that it's stuff- it's a way is, to make her in, like a traditional Mandalorian. Right, yeah. because most of the uh, stuff, the way and all that, that comes from the legends and shit. Um, you know, Boba Fett was never a Mandalorian, a true Mandalorian, yeah, yeah. whatever. He stole the armor, whatever. Django but, stole the armor, too. Or Django stole the and armor. He and got he it modif- from the, yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I think it's a great way for Filoni to say, hey, I, I don't have to erase any of the shit that I did, but I can wrap it all up into shit that I loved growing up. Because you know he read the same books and comic books I did growing up. Yeah. You know he did. I'm excited. Yeah. I, I, wonder, I can't wait to see where the season goes. So it wasn't goes. such a bad episode after all, was it? You fucking uh, douche. Well, the, the sidetracking storyline kind of <laughs> for me. But but uh, of the three, I think for me it's the weaker of them. But the dogfight scenes were pretty badass. I love the... I always, when she flips her wing, dude, that was badass, dude. I, I'm always a big fan of dogfighting in Star Wars. Yeah. Big old... Well, not, not real Not like the illegal fighting. kind, but yeah. like in the air. <laughs> Uh, so final grade, I'm gonna give it a B. Give it a B. no. B minus. <laughs> no, 
Oh, Pima. I didn't know if you were going to. I thought you were having a stroke. Um, <laughs> Maybe I was. I have to give it an incomplete because I haven't seen it. All. You fucking. But I'm, I'm certain. <laughs> this is me beating him. <laughs> yeah. Don't uh, you ever come in here and do I'm that gonna, shit again? We shouldn't make light of it. But yeah, I, we shouldn't. I didn't but, actually. Um, <laughs> no, he didn't. But I don't. Um, I, I know I'll probably enjoy it. So based off what I've seen and what I know about the episode, I'm going to give it a tentative B, solid B. B plus. Because I got to be different. Fuck you. Got to be different. Like- we started without telling me. I can't believe we got Tom Arroya from uh, Slayer to do our. No, we did not. That? There's no way we could afford that guy, Tyler. We no, we couldn't. He was Tyler, just like, you guys are awesome. Every single week, we go to Mayhem Comics in I Des Moines. Do. Well, you do. Yes, shut up. Just play along <laughs> with the story. <laughs> yeah, no, we do. They hook us up with a brand new comic every week. We don't mm-hmm. have any say. They pick it out for us. No, we don't want a say. Like, we want to, you know what I mean? Because we, I'm yeah, Marvel, yes. you're DC. Prop, proper, proper verbiage. And there. so, basically, this is our way of being able to check out um, independent books that we might not um, pick out ourselves. Um, and that encourage are, you that to. That are hot sellers. And or that... Um, that would broaden our horizons a little I bit. I wasn't going for a cheers there, but oh. I was just going to say, uh, yeah, to encourage, you know, supporting the, not only the indie publishers, but also your uh, local comic shops. Go so to your check local out. comic book shop, man. Do you know how much Specifically, cool stuff there is? Mayhem Comics in Des Moines. And Ames. Yes. I, actually, I think uh, it's in Clive, but Des Moines is fine. Look up Mayhem in Des Moines. You're fine. It says Des Moines on the website. So it's it's fine. fine. Anyway, what is the comic this week, Tyler? This week is Star Trek Defiant by IDW. Um, IDW is probably like the third or fourth biggest publisher right now, honestly. Um, yeah, after definitely. Image and uh, you know Marvel DC, definitely Image. Doing better than Boom. <laughs> Take it, Boom Studios. It's probably right now. It's probably Marvel DC, Image, uh, Dark Horse, and then IDW. And in fact, IDW might be even like three or four because they got a lot of fucking books on the market, um, and they're all. Um, uh, a see, lot of they them lost are, the Transformers license. They did, which is fine because I'm willing to bet Marvel will. Do, I never read any of that shit. Um, <laughs> some good. Shit I've heard there. it was really good. Yeah. Um, so we got Star Trek Defiant number one, and what it is is it has it's a Worf story, and it's about um, it's a lot of stuff. <laughs> Star Trek is very dense mythologically, and I know uh, has a very dense mythology, and I know um, especially like the later. Next generation stuff. TNG. Yeah. And um I, I did watch most of those. And Star Wars, I'm sure somebody could say that about Star Wars too. Um, but for whatever reason, uh when I was growing up, I tended to be more Marvel DC and more Star Wars than Star Trek. Yeah, I'm I'm the same way. I, I never really was interested in Star Trek growing up. I you know, like the original series, um, I can't really watch an episode of the original series because it's like an hour long. <laughs> it is. And unless you're really into Star Trek, yeah. it's kind of fucking boring. It is kind of weird because of all the things like y- you think about when you watch movies or TV shows with your parents and you see how like formative that thing and usually what your parents like you like, um, my dad like watched when he was growing up. He he watched the original series, but mm. we never like watched Next Generation or Deep Space. Like we didn't watch any of that. Well, see, because I don't think he was that into it, and I think that's probably why I haven't been in like really haven't been in Star Trek. So let me let me put nothing you guys, against Star Trek. By let me. me put you guys into a scene here. Let me put you guys into a time. It's the time is 1986. It's three years removed from uh, Return of the Jedi. Um, you uh, have probably had Temple of Doom, but you know uh, Last Crusade is probably a couple years off in the in the uh, rear view, and you're expecting a a third Indiana Jones anyway. But most of this, the, most of the properties that you know are 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 just kind of kind of gone. And there's no real, you know, you, 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 shit, you're never going to get another Star Wars movie. Are you kidding me? And Star Trek, well, the original cast is getting older and stuff, you know, and 
I mean, sure, they're doing movies, but only the isn't it only the odd numbers are the good ones. The point is, <laughs> is that at that point, right now, it's a thing that all the IPs you loved as kids are coming back. Oh, they it's cyclical. They always come back. right. But how in, many versions have there 19, been? TMNT? In, in 1986, the next generation was the only thing of yeah. all the IPs that we liked that was like, oh shit, a continuation. An yeah, yeah. Right. We, you know, we're ten years away from the sequel trilogy, all that. Um, so. That's why I watched the Next Generation because it was a way to get, you know, a weekly way to get into that, you know, and and to and to keep that science fiction, that love for science fiction. And I did like it when I first watched it, but again, it's just really, really dense. And one of the things, it's not a bad book, but one of the things I talked to you about is for some reason, Star Wars and Star Trek uh, comic books, when they were first being made, the editors of the Star Trek comic book were adamant. That all of the artists have to draw the characters like the actors who play them. So on the cover, that's Michael Dorn, that's Leonard Nimoy, that's Brent Spiner, that's yeah. whoever the chick was in in uh, I think um, Deep Space Nine. Yeah. But it makes the art weird, doesn't it? You felt you felt that way same way, right? D- d- well, for you, in I, Star Wars, they don't make that much of an effort. Well, and it, it helps I with think, the art. Well, I think it's because you're coming from this. It's coming from the TV medium, right? And you're coming from that. So when you're reading the comic, you're reading it. You're almost reading it like a TV show. Sure. Because I don't know about you, but when I was reading it, I heard Le- Leonard Nimoy's voice. Of course. You know, I you know I heard Worf's actor's voice, so I can't think of you probably know it. I don't. Michael Dorn. Uh, I said you. it. Yeah. yeah. No, it's Mike, Michael Dorn. Yeah. I'm hearing that voice. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. And this is also it. someone that who has like a passing knowledge of TNG. Like again, I never really watched it, but I know who they are. I know. Like, did you ever I see First much. Contact? One of the better Star Trek movies. No. It's actually really. No, good. No, I saw the best one, Nemesis. <laughs> again, never seen that movie, but I know people fucking hate that movie. I I <laughs> think I tried to watch it, but again, it's so dense with the TNG mythology that yeah. I can't get into it. And. I think that is to the detriment of this book because Star Trek Defiant, again with you, I honestly think was well written. I think it. I, I and the art's not bad. It's just again the, the, the that bugs me about the. But the, it doesn't. The, it's not there's bad. certain things that are done in the story that I'm like again. If I was like a big TNG fan, this would probably impact me more. Again, I'm not taking away from the book in any way. And, I, yeah, I just, I'm probably more. I a, I was yeah. thoroughly entertained with it. I thought. Again, someone who is coming in as cold as an icicle with <laughs> Star, our Star Trek knowledge. Right, yeah. For me to come in and kind of... I, it, I, I mean, they're talking about like the first Klingon Emperor. I'm like, dude, I don't fucking know like what. But I also think they did a well enough <laughs> job that I could kind of navigate it. And, there's, and, a, and, there's a couple things of exposition right at the beginning of the book, and then there's two like uh, Captain's Logs pages. I love that, by the way. That is perfect because it does allow you to get more into the story. And I think it's also very, uh, you could probably say no to this, but it, I feel like that's more of like a Star Trek thing to have something like that. Yeah. Like this yeah, big I think piece so of too. text to yeah. be like, here's the expedition. Um, honestly, it, it's, 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 in it's, universe, it's a comic so book thing nowadays. Like Marvel books do it a lot where they just take a page and it's like, especially the X Men books. Um, they'll take a page and it'll be like a, a, an excerpt it's from always the front Emma page. Frost's diary. No, not always. It's like, you know, sometimes. Yeah, but, oh yeah, sometimes it's in, in universe. Yeah, 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 especially since Aaron, uh, Jason Aaron took over. But uh, No, uh, who's been doing X-Men? Hickman? Yes, since Hickman took over. Aaron is about to finish up the Avengers. Dugan's doing so it now, I in think. Terms of, um, in terms of a a, a straight up just objecti- uh, objecti- uh, uh, objectified... Um, just out, just the book review. Itself. It's a good book, yeah. but just not being as big into Star Trek as as I am, and probably you are either. It, it, it's probably not something I would buy. But if you are into Star Trek and he, and you watch like the whole TNG and and you're really into that, um, you know, if you're watching what is the new uh, Picard? No, that's uh, 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 hey man, Strange you, New Worlds if, or or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're they're on Paramount Plus, but they're kind of continuations and they're kind of like offshoots different I, timelines i think you'd be but better off i was just gonna say uh picard i know you're very upset everybody hated season two everybody hated season one i think uh season, season three looks fucking cool, everybody though. says that season like based on like the the star trek people that i've heard from is like season three is gonna be kick-ass it's it's like a a proper send-off to the tng character yes 
which for you I'm sure is exciting. So I was going to say you might want to check that out. I and if you're watching, if Picard you're watching Picard, mm-hmm. Star Trek Defiant, probably a great companion piece. There's something yeah. to have there with those characters. Um, yeah, if you like Star Trek, um, yeah. it's definitely a book for you. Um, it, we're just not as huge. But as I Star love Trek. Si- I love sci-fi so much. Yeah. That I was still enjoyed it. I still had fun with it. Yeah, and, and I think absolutely. it does a great job of still having uh, more like uh, pulpy sci-fi elements to it. So yep. again, someone like me who doesn't have a ton of knowledge of it mm. can navigate the story and understand what's going on because right. it's a pretty simple story. Yeah, but as we know, with like Star Trek shit, it's never that simple. Or in Star Wars. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, in Star Wars. Uh, yeah. So overall. Um, I, I like your assessment. If you if if you like Star Trek, especially TNG, you're really gonna love this. Yeah, I think so. Uh, if you're not, you're probably if you're not into Star Trek, you're probably not gonna read Star Trek to find anyway. Probably. That's just that's just the case. But anyway, another great episode. As, as you notice, we've been uh, putting these up on our YouTube. So let's you can let's let's uh, let, and let me do well. let me do let me go do you one better. If you're walking along and you're looking at the the wall of new comics and you don't see any that you like from your regular whatever. You son of a bitch. I knew you were going to do and it. And you see this Star Trek Defiant and and you haven't seen anything else, dude. Check it out, man. You it's a good it's well written and the art is good and uh you know there's a lot of they do a lot of Star Trek books. So <laughs> I'm just saying you son of a bitch because I knew you were going to talk about the Avengers. No, I ca- I can't. I already talked to you about it. Oh, you don't want me to. You can't if you want. I'm just saying I need to end this segment. Let's end it. Okay. Is it weird that every time I hear that, like, I feel like I have to take a shit? Like, it just just vibrates my bowels to the point where I have to poop? I feel like that's any time I talk. Like, <laughs> vibrates through my ears. And gotta drop Every time you talk, you gotta take a shit. That's my supercar. They call me Brown Note. <laughs> they call me Brown Note. <laughs> my, my partner's Jesus Rex. He's a holy dinosaur. <laughs> Holy dino! <laughs> Holy dino! You've been down the block to the rich and low. Oh, what you see, what I mean. We thought you were extinct. No! no. Ride the tiger! You can see his stripes so you know he's clean. Yeah. That's lyrics. You can't write lyrics like that. Like Johnny They did. don't write them like that. You can see his stripes so you know hey, he's while, clean. While we're on the topic of music, T Pain. Released a cover album hmm. on top of the covers. Isn't no, that's Ti who like checked it. Okay, yeah, T Pain. T Pain, good. His cover of War Pigs is actually fucking gnarly. I I'm really, to, like I'm after li- dude. War Pigs is a great song to cover because it's pretty easy and also you can really fucking rock that shit out. It's really, a, it's really trippy and weird. I love I'll have it. to listen to. I it. love it. Big fan. Uh, Pantera did uh, Planet Caravan by Black Sabbath. Fuck Pantera. <laughs> Up in Love Shop with Jake and Tyler. <laughs> <laughs>